Jonathan Von Ness just came out as HIV positive. Unfortunately, his story seems all too common. Hi, I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. Jonathan Von Ness is arguably one of the most famous members of the LGBTQ community in the United States. He rose to the top with his wildly popular series Gay of Thrones and is currently one of the cast members of Queer Eye. Over this past weekend, the New York Times published an interview with JVN where he discusses the vulnerabilities of his new memoir, Over the Top, Raw Journey of Self-Love. During this interview, JVN shared he's HIV positive. He also shared that he was sexually abused as a child and has a history of substance use, including both cocaine and meth. He also shared that as a teenager, he used the internet to find sex, sometimes with older men, and he has engaged in sex for money. His book isn't out yet. I haven't read it, so I can't tell you any further details about any of this. But what I can tell you is that the history described in this article isn't too different from the histories of many LGBTQ people. In the US, there are an estimated 1.6 million homeless youth, and 40% of them are LGBTQ. Now, keep in mind that only about 7% of youth identify as LGBTQ, so this is a huge disparity. According to the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, sexual minority populations compared to heterosexuals are more than twice as likely to have used an illicit drug in the last year, and they're more likely to have a substance use disorder at some point in their life. Sex work is also not unique to JVN's story. A study of 300 LGBTQ youths in New York City revealed that 50% of them had engaged in survival sex, or the act of having sex for food, money, or shelter. And in terms of HIV, according to the CDC, gay and bisexual men make up over 80% of new diagnoses among men each year. What's even worse is that a meta-analysis from 2015 showed that 28% of males and 40% of females who are LGBTQ adults reported that they had been sexually abused as children. I once got in an argument with a guy outside of a bar because he tried to tell me that of course this makes sense because all gay people were sexually abused as children and now have a mental disorder. Yeah, there is clearly a correlation between being a sexual minority and homelessness, substance use, sexual abuse, HIV, and sex work, but it's not a cause and effect relationship. What actually explains these associations is minority stress, which is a theory that individuals of minority populations are subject to heightened levels of everyday stressors and discrimination. And these stressors contribute to a variety of negative health behaviors, including substance use, risky sex, and poor mental health. This theory was originally developed to explain behaviors among sexual minority populations, but has been expanded to include unique stressors for all minorities. Now, I don't know Jonathan Von Ness. We've met in passing, he seems like a nice guy, and based on this article, I would guess that he's probably dealt with more than his fair share of minority stress. It also seems that when times got really tough for him, he was able to go back home go to rehab a couple times, and then start a new life with a family trust fund. Now, I'm not saying this invalidates his story in any way. I think he's obviously using his platform to spread positivity, love, and acceptance, but the majority of LGBTQ youth and young adults don't have that to fall back on. Again, I haven't read his book, but I'm also going to guess that this is probably something he addresses in there. And what I also think this highlights is that even if you are privileged in some ways, the stress of being a sexual minority person is still really high. Luckily, there are now a lot of organizations with missions to help LGBTQ youth so they can get a second or even first chance at a healthy adulthood. I'm posting some links below. If you know a sexual minority young person, reach out, make sure they're okay. And lastly, parents of queer kids, stop being assholes. I get it. You think their life would be better if they're straight, but rejecting your kid due to their sexuality or gender identity is not going to make them whoever you think it is they should be. In fact, you rejecting them only raises their chances of substance abuse, sexual risk taking, and even attempting suicide. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.